Okay, what we're going to look at now is what happens if we start bringing the concept of woody beds or hula culture into this and a little bit of excavation and how we can kind of turbocharge this whole thing. What we could do, for instance, is if we have a lot of woody material around trees, old ones that are already rotted, or things that are going to be cut down maybe to put a home site in or a shed, or trees that we're, we're, we're felling just because they're not what we want on the land, and we're taking some of them for firewood, and we have smaller bush and shrubs, we can take wood, if this is a 12 foot, uh, 12 inch section here, wood that's about 4 foot high when laid on the ground. So we're talking about material about like this. And we could lay this on the ground, that's too big. We could lay this on the ground in a somewhat organized format. And it doesn't have to be level across the top because obviously it's going to follow the slope up. Now what this does is it reduces the amount of fill that we need. But let's say about right here, we've gone from having 8 inches of cover, which is 12 minus 4 is 8, to right here we have only about, let's come back a little more to be realistic, about 4 inches of cover at that point. And we decide, I want at least 4 inches of cover. right? You, if you're planting trees and stuff like that, you probably want more, but trees will find their way in between this wood. It, 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 it's really okay. Um, but you probably want at least four inches. With annuals, you definitely need four inches. You've got to have some place for that root system to form, right? And this wood will break down. But I'd like to go all the way back to here. What I can do, and this is very cool, is I right here, I stop. And I know my point that I wanted to get to is right at the edge there. That's where, when I drew my level line off here, I came to right here. I come in with a piece of equipment, and this doesn't have to be a large excavator. This is something I can do with a bobcat uh, or a tractor with a digger attachment on the rear. I might be able to, depending on my, my dirt, I might be able to do this any kind of a bucket load or anything like that. And all I do is I create a ter I cut my terrace like typically here. So this now is a little ledge, and this is about 8 inches deep off the ledge of the terrace there. Now, I can come in, and it's not going to be a scale, guys, but you get the point. And I can fill in that whole thing with wood, and I can bring my topsoil in and come as level as I can draw, which isn't very level apparently, all the way back, and I've got cover all the way back. Now, the beauty of doing this is all of this material that I remove can become part of my fill. I can spread it across the hole. What I want to do is I want to scrape the first couple inches of topsoil and reserve it, and then everything else I can just take out. I can spread that out over. I can bring my fill back in. But now I've got a terrace that I've only had to excavate maybe 25 35% of using equipment, which means if I have to do this by hand, if this earth is soft enough that I can do this by hand, if my project either I have enough time to do it, uh, or it's not so large that I can't do this with picks and shovels and, and, and things like that. I've reduced the amount. I don't have to now come down here and cut this whole piece out. I've reduced the amount of labor, uh, either on machine or human being, by about 80%. And I've now come up. Now this only, this type of, of, of a situation, bringing all this material for fill, only works really, really well for us if we have a source of fill. But many times we'll be able to obtain a source of fill. Maybe we've done some excavation somewhere else. We have additional fill. We can use it here. Maybe there's a low-cost local source of decent quality fill, topsoil and things like that. A lot of times you're talking yards and yards of it for 15 bucks a yard or something like that. So that works. I can also do other things. If I'm on a wooded property and I am taking a lot of woody material out, I can go out and rent a shredder. On top of this layer of wood, I can maybe put down a layer of wood chips about that big. You do not want wood chips turned into soil, right? The two mixed together, it gets very, very hard. But if it's a layer below or on top and it sits there by itself, it basically adds to the Google culture. So now I could come in and I could put a layer, let's say an inch deep of wood chips, on top of this. That's an inch less of fill that I need, and it's all organic matter. A lot of it fits down into here. Okay, I've got a woody sponge now. Now I put my layer of topsoil on here. And with my shredder, chipper shredder, I come in and I put a layer of mulch two inches deep up here. 
I've still got some freeboard on my rocks. And now I've got basically a lasagna slash woody bed slash terrace that I've only had to excavate the last 30% of. I get very, very level with very simple, easy to construct tools. I've got a watershed that I'm creating because all of this water that hits this level surface is going to stop, seep in, and follow downgrade underneath. It sort of acts like a swale. It sort of acts like a hugel culture bed. It sort of acts like a terrace. It's really pieces of all three being put together. This is where we start to create redundancies upon redundancies upon redundancies. And we start to see how powerful something stupid simple like an A-frame level is. There's so much that I can do here. I can take my A-frame level, I could, I could when, I, when I figure out where this spot is, I can take that contour line and pull it back to my cut. And once I have that determined, I can go in here, I could actually level this cut if it's that important to me. I probably don't have to, but I can. But with that A-frame level, I can mirror my two contour lines, and I know exactly what I'm dealing with. And all it takes is a few pieces of wood, something heavy, a string, a level, and a known level surface, and a little bit of knowledge of how to use it. This is what you can come up with. This should give you a lot of ideas. A lot of you guys say, I have really gentle slope. I can, can't even tell. I don't think there is any slope. My line's dead flat. Your land's not dead flat. Unless you live in the middle of a dead saw lake bed, your land's not flat. There's a slope. The less slope you have, the larger the terrace you can construct, with the least amount of fill. If this right here was somewhere in this range right here, 4 inches and 12 feet, um, we could then, off of a 12 foot deep terrace, go 36 feet back. Here's the important part. Maybe I don't need to go 36 feet back, right? Maybe I only need to go 18 feet back. So that means if I go 6 inches high, I can go 18 feet. That's a pretty big terrace. It doesn't have to be really deep. Remember, it's not like we're saying all of this down here is no good to work with. We're creating the structure so that the water and the hydrology will behave a certain way. With that, it's been another uh, permaculture video. I'll see what I can come up with for you next.